just wear these t-shirts because love is an action word. shaping his life. Well, he, he has so many talents and gifts. And we're going to go ahead on and let the Lord have his way with him this morning. He do mime dance, and this is our first time having a mime dance in here. So, y'all, give him a hand as he come up, y'all. Good day. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some Weary days yeah. I think things over All of my good days Outweigh my bad days That brings 
me to the message today because I want to I want to preach life and not death. We got in this world today, it seems like everything is dead. It seems like it's a problem everywhere you look. It's rise, it's racism, it's hatred, it's corruption in the government, it's wars and rumors of wars, it's so many things happening, explosions and earthquakes and fires and y'all know we're in the last days? These are the last days. And people say all the time, oh, we've been seeing this, we've been seeing this, yeah, but you ain't never had Bible prophecy to unfold the way it's unfolding today. Ain't no other time in history when they was claiming Jesus was coming, that Bible prophecy was proving itself that Christ was coming. Well, I'm here to tell y'all today, brothers and sisters, Bible prophecy is proving itself today that Jesus Christ is coming, amen? But the first thing I want to talk to you guys, John 3.16 says what? For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son. So you mean to tell me God so loved that he gave something? He said he loved us so much that he gave, not lent, not borrowed, not I gave you my only begotten. And let me tell you something, the Lord spoke to me so vivid and clear the other day about that when I was reading that scripture. And he let me know that he said begotten and only because Jesus was heaven's greatest and most precious gift. And God gave us that gift, amen? And he said, well, Chris, what would you do? What would you do? Would you give your son? And at that moment, I felt how much God really loved us. For you to take your most, y'all think about it, what is your most prized possession in your life? Now, would you trade that in to save somebody else's life? Not nobody wrong, you're talking about a stranger. Look how deep that is. Romans 10 9 says that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe, that's a strong word, in our heart that God had risen in from the dead, we shall be saved. That's what it said, right? So it's God is telling us if we what? Confess. Y'all, you have to confess some things. The Bible tells us to confess one to another when you're going through. Have your one or two people that you can go and talk to. Don't let the devil isolate you where you can't go to nobody. All your problems is to yourself. You look like you got it all together on the outside and the inside. You broken, you beat up. You going through, you confused. You, you, the devil is tempting you with all kind of negative thoughts and suicidal thoughts. And before you know it, you're stressed and you're depressed and you're losing your hair. Not, not, not going right. God says, don't hold that in. Because if you confess, just like if you confess your sins to me, don't think that what you did last month, last week, last night, an hour ago, God don't know about. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says, We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. Y'all know that? But this is just for somebody. The Lord wanted me to encourage you and let you know that we do not fear that. The believer, the Christian, do not fear that. I don't fear it, y'all. But he tell us, if I confess my sins, and if I believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Lord, God said, if I put my trust and my hope and my faith in him, that I don't have to worry because I won't see that I just sleep. Amen? So look, that is not for the believer. I didn't come to preach that, but to preach life. That is not for the believer because we only see sleep. How do we know that? First Thessalonians 4, 4.13 says, but I do not want you to be ignorant. Look at that. God said it himself. He don't want his people to be ignorant. He said, brother, concerning those that have fallen asleep, those that have died in, in, in Christ, those that are sleeping now in the Lord, he said, to that lest you sorrow or, or, or sorrow me more than I cry, as others do. Second Timothy 1.10 says, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ who has abolished death. It's, he conquered it. It's defeated. It's gone. It's no more. You don't have to worry. And not only did he defeat that Hades in the grave, but brought life and immortality to those of us who believe. Y'all know that? You have life. And you are immortal in the eyes of God. Meaning you will live forever. You live for billions of years. Do you understand? There's no death. You never die. And that's hard for me to wrap my head around because I can't picture living forever because we know death has been introduced to us in the flesh. And y'all, I'm here to tell you, you don't want to risk that for this life. 
You don't want to risk eternity for playing around in this life. Because it ain't going to get you nowhere, I promise y'all. We got to allow our flesh to be free and to break away from these things that we know ain't doing us no good. And when you don't give your life to God, and when you look back on your life a year from now, a year or two from when you once was, you look back and be like, God, I'm in the same spot, doing the same thing, around the same people. Nobody is around to encourage nobody. Nobody could be a leader. Everybody just dancing to the same beat, falling down the same, the same cliff. God saying those times is over. How bad do you want me? You think it's a coincidence y'all sitting here this morning? Listening to this teaching? God want to tug at somebody's heart this morning. He want to get somebody shaking and get somebody serious enough to forsake everything else and give him your all. That's it. And guess what? He ain't going to force it, but he's waiting for you. He's your biggest cheerleader. A lot of people think the Lord is sitting in heaven waiting to pop, pop him on top of the head. Waiting to beat him up. Waiting for to, to tear him down. But God is your biggest cheerleader. He's saying, come on, come on, you can do it. Come on, get up, get up, get up. John 14, 6, Jesus said to his disciples, what, anybody know that scripture? He said, I am the way, way, the truth, the truth and the life. And he said, no man goes to the Father but what? By him. Guess what, y'all, I'm here to tell you. You can't go get into heaven no other way but through Jesus Christ. Every other way is a counterfeit. I don't care what you heard or what they told you. Even y'all, I cry and weep so much sometimes for my family members and my loved ones that I know not saved. And I cry out for them and I say, God, please save them. They don't know. They don't understand. They don't know what's coming. They don't know what they're in for. They don't know that they're playing around with this life. They don't know that you have more fun. God, shake them and give them a, give them an awakening because they don't know. One day they're going to they gonna leave this life and they're going to wake up in everlasting punishment. And it's going to be too late. And you can't turn back while the saints and the believers are going to be in the presence of the Lord. And I don't believe God even going to allow us to even remember those that, that go to hell. I don't believe he's going to torment us with it. And I believe those in hell are going to be able to know us in heaven. Because it's a punishment. And God is going to remind them constantly that you are out my will and this is what you miss. When are you going to get serious? When are we going to give everything to God? Let me tell you also, y'all, don't get yourself caught up in the things of the world and get distracted. Because what's getting ready to come to this earth, God said, when the Antichrist and, 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 and the beast and, and the false prophet come on the scene, he said, it can, it's going to be so power, powerful that it can deceive even the very elect. Don't y'all know God elect is being deceived to this day? Don't get caught up in that, y'all. Because God is exposing those who have, truly have his love. And those who don't, because now people's hearts are being seen for who they truly are. I could just read social media. I could see a person dressed up, looking nice, always preaching the word of God, and at the same time, they spread hatred on social media. And I look at that like, that's not the love of Jesus. That's not the love of Christ. God don't want us getting into that, y'all. I want to give you guys two facts, and y'all should know it because I say it all the time in life. And one of those facts is what? We live. We live. And what's the next fact? We die. We die. Y'all know God created each and every last one of us in his image, blew his breath in our nostrils for us to glorify him. And it's his breath that I got in my body, but I didn't want to give him five minutes. Is he the reason that my bills are being paid and blessed me with a child, but I don't want to give him five minutes. He the reason I got my health and COVID-19 and no other uh, health problems struck me, but I don't want to give him five minutes. You understand? God want to give somebody life today because you've been playing around too long. And some of us playing around and don't know God getting ready to call us home. This could be one of our, and I pray I hope God forbid, this could be somebody's last message. The Lord is tugging at your heart and playtime is over, but only you can make the decision. God ain't going to force you to do right. He ain't going to force you to give up religion and give up tradition and give up your old ways and turn it. He ain't going to force you to do that because it's a choice. You have to choose.
to follow God. Just like we choose to follow the world. We choose to go to that job. We choose to date that man or date that woman. We choose to live in that house. We choose to buy that car. You have to choose God. He ain't gonna make it come. Every last one of us in here has have purpose. Everybody in here has purpose. God called everybody to do something. Give your all to Christ, y'all. Get yourself connected with some believers. Because I'm going to tell you, you're going to need it with what's coming. Nobody really want to give God time to watch when this pandemic. Watch, watch when things really kick off. Watch how many people start running to the church and looking for Christians and stuff. And watch. Because people are going to be confused because they didn't take heed to the warning of God. God is telling you there's life in Jesus Christ. And death in everything else. What are you praying for? This is like a red. God is waving the red flag saying, hey, wake up. You don't have long. I'm getting ready to send my son to come to the earth. I'm allowing all these things to happen. Famine is coming to the land. It's coming, y'all. You better start storing up on food for at least six months to a year. Start educating your stuff on that. Start getting your, your bullets and your guns because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Matthew 10, 39 says, He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. God said, if you find your life here on this earth, and this is what pleases please you, everything you got going on, and that's what you're happy with, and you know in your heart you don't have, you might know him. You know how many people know God? They're going to get left behind. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You work up iniquity because they don't have a relationship with him. God said, I'm warning you. I'm trying to connect you with people that have my true spirit. I'm trying to connect you with people that's going to tell you the truth. Because we're going to tell you the truth here. And I pray to God I do it out of love. But y'all, if this is all you want in this life, this is your reward right here. He said, but he who loses his life, for my sake, God said, if you give your life up for me, if you don't worry about uh, what the world calling you to do, but if you go and follow my will, go where I'm telling you to go, do what I'm telling you to do, help what I'm telling you to help, sow what I'm telling you to sow. You see, let me tell you what being sold out is. You not only have to confess Jesus with your mouth, you have to believe him in your heart. But you have to put some action with that. Because the Bible tells us faith without words is what? Yeah. It's dead. Give it all to God. Don't, don't keep something away from him. Lose your life for Christ's sake. Give it all up. It's not worth it. You're going to wake up one day and going to be in eternity. And I pray that it's eternal heaven and not eternal hell. It's time for us. For God shows people to go back to our first love. Playtime is over. Go back to your first love. Revelation, I'm about closing it out. Revelation 2 4 says, Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. God said, He got this against us. He said, Because you love me. He said, I died. I sent my son to die for you. I gave you my most precious gift. I sat down and, and, and made you in my image from the dust. Blew my breath in your, in your nostrils and yet you don't want nothing to do with me. You turn your back on me. You're ashamed of me in front of people. You won't even say my name in front of certain people. You'll raise your hand up on, in a church on Sunday in front of believers. But come Monday, you're doing what the sinner's doing and can't even speak my name. Come on, it's time to go back to your first love. And you know the good thing about all that, y'all? Even when we abandon God, turn our backs on Him, shake our fists in His face, when things don't go our way or go right, He's still that loving Father with His arms open. We're gonna leave this place in a twinkling of an eye. Don't run away, don't run away. Jesus can save your soul today. Run away.